So we're just going to nicely develop the night. So just having a look at um, how we can develop in this game, but looking at the concepts that we've worked on over the past few years. Just bring the bishop here. I think in this game it's looking at really what are the benefits and what are the negative sides of the move. So at this moment in time we're supporting the pawn here. We really do want to go on castle. Is the opponent looking to go for the cheapy? All these things here, you know, getting the queen here, coming across here. So a lot of forward processes of thinking uh, come into play in this type of game. So I'm going to castle. So mindful that the cheapy, in a sense, is the mainstay type thing for this player in this position. Doesn't mean they're going to go for that type of thing. So I'm going to just push the pawn here, just opening up our bishop, maybe to potentially attack their bishop. If they do, then we open up and then we're facing the weak pawn here. But they've brought the knight out, so probably the knight is going to come and sit here now to block off that type of um, picture. No, I do not. So I don't have a problem actually having the knight uh, taken with the pawn blocking the knight from here. But seeing as there's nothing behind, we don't necessarily need to go down that we take, then the pawn is on their knight, then we can come back up here with the pawn, defending the pawn once that happens. So that's the kind of picture that we see in here. It seems pretty straightforward. Uh, so we'll capture. Obviously the knight's potentially coming here to attack the pawn, and as we said, we're just going to push this pawn here. It's not saying it's the best position at all, but based on our past experience based on the position on the board it seems more appropriate but it might not be the best move so I mean I must sound like I uh, you know <laughs> um, every player that plays a game they're doing they're making their moves because they're calculating the position they're calculating the if buts and maybes and if they're not articulating it verbally they are obviously thinking about those types of things and whether it's the right move or not um, comes down to what the opponent does how they react to that position if they find the best moves then they find the best moves but somewhere along the line a decision has to be made um, before I do that can actually see the bishop coming here attacking ready to attack the rook so I'm going to push the pawn up supporting and get ready to either attack the bishop or just bring the rook here because if we have sights of this we can sense that the bishop would do that smaller piece attacking the higher piece can't be wrong it does make them lose a bit of tempo if they do bring the bishop here the other pieces aren't really developed head of the snake is always attacked we've always said this so if they did take Let's get rid of those. If we did allow them to take, we could still push onto here, but then we do lose a kind of tempo because the bishop attacks the rook. Then we bring our um, rook here. Then I suppose the bishop has to make its mind up to move. So then I think in a sense we still have a bit of tempe one. And does it improve the rook's position? That's, this is my thought process. I'm thinking if we take, knight takes supporting the bishop so let's have a look at this i think the smaller piece attacking the higher piece first potentially for me works if they do take we do lose the pawn but we'll take this bishop off the board okay so the bishop does move it gives us a chance to push this pawn up onto their bishop so that bishop then is going to move either to attack our bishop or comes back here do we do that? I think smaller piece attacking the higher piece does kind of work for us. Let's just take, attack the bishop again with the smaller piece. Nothing special we're doing here. We're just utilizing the simple process. Yes, so they've gone all the way back. They've really blocked in their queen. So the knight and the bishop are the only ones out, but they're not fully developed. So can we take advantage of that? I'm really wanting to take this pawn because if we don't, I don't think I have any other supporting mechanisms. If we take this pawn, 
then they take that pawn, then we take that pawn. Mm, opens up a can of worms. I think I'm going to have to take this pawn. Something's telling me not to take that pawn though and do something else. Mm, I don't think there's anything. I'm going to have to take it. Reason why I don't want to develop their piece, which I am doing, you know, the knight is now developed um, a little bit more. He's not castled yet, so I think that's what they're going to do next. We could attack this pawn, but he can jump down onto our knight, which is not a very good position. Is there anything else? We have plenty of time, 16 minutes. We could take this pawn, they take, or we could push onto this pawn. But if we allow the opponent to take this pawn, take, um, our bishop is then getting opened up, isn't it? I think we're going to go with that. Again, it's a lot of pawn manoeuvres going on here. Just trying to get some type of ownership of spaces and squares, as mentioned in the answer process. So me talking like this does not mean I've got anything set in stone at all. It's just how a chess player would operate you know you have to think of why you're making those moves um all i'm doing is verbalizing the moves like any chess streamer when they're doing okay so we're taking so it's hopefully opening up our bishop our dark square bishop the knight's taken the pawn now in my head i'm thinking i'm not too sure if that's right so what can we do with this situation now we've opened up space around here Rook can attack. Is he looking for a magical fork? His rook probably comes to defend. White square bishop then attacks. And then his bishop then comes and defends. So there's going to be a lot of work around this area. So they're plus one at this moment in time. What's our knight doing? Our knight could come here. Just defending. Get the bishop here. Attacking the rook. But the rook is already wanting to come here. So I think simple is as basically getting our, could go with the bishop attack first, attacking the knight, or bring the queen up, but then if we do that, the rook comes here. So we don't necessarily really want to have it in that position. Could bring the queen here, attacking the knight, and the bishop comes and then it's x-raying through to the queen. So that's not going to be good either. So let's go with the rook attacking the knight first. We know it's got loads of pieces that can defend it. It's even got the pawn defending it. Okay, so bring the bishop now attacking because the bishop's not there anymore. So we thought the bishop was going to come. Knight's obviously not going to stay there, I don't think. I think it's going to bounce back. So they're plus one, but we're trying to improve our position. They're not castled at the minute, so their king is a little bit airy. Um, their pieces aren't necessarily out, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we can take advantage of that. So the rook is coming to defend. So we can just simply take the uh, knight off the board. It then elevates his pawn here. Or is there any other magical type of move? I don't think so. I think we can just take the knight. This bishop supporting the rook, so there's no point bringing the queen here because the knight can just move. But the rook is defending. So the knight can move and then queen can come. Uh, where's his king? Where's his king? Uh, trying to find a space in. Okay, so now this is a little bit of a tricky situation, isn't it? Now it looks like my pieces are jammed in because I can't get in here. I'm simply going to take, he gets a pass pawn, so then our queen can come here. I think he'll do the pawn rather than the rook. So the queen can come here, blocking off for a moment, try and then sort of work out. Whoa, they haven't. Okay, so the bishop's going to come and defend the pawn. I'm going to bring the queen in now. It's not stopping anything, you can still go and castle. 
So he's got a nice little passer going here. So we're going to have to put pressure onto this passer. So the bishop's actually protecting. The bishop queen is protecting the bishop. So we can't do anything at this moment in time. Could push the pawn onto the um, pawn. If the pawn takes, take the queen, take them. I'm going to push the pawn. I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as that because the bishop's probably coming here to attack our queen. And because they're plus one, they're going to be feeling a little bit confident about that. So we can take, go for the exchange maybe. A lot of thought process is going on in this game. So just trying to sort of like show the... Um, as you've seen with the previous videos where it's the count, yes, yeah, gone straight there. So we can go here or we can put a check on the king to stop it from going castling. Obviously the bishop can bounce backwards and forwards so you're then looking at maybe a draw or are they looking for an exchange? Because at the end of the day, they are plus one. You know, so maybe they want to think of doing something with that. I was thinking maybe if we do take this off the board, Take this off the board, queen takes, pawn takes, this pawn is not protected but I suppose they're probably going to come and protect it. And then bishop comes here with a check on the king again. Could actually do the queen, bishop putting a check on the king now. Again stopping it from castling in a sense. Yeah. Interesting. Shall we go with that? Bishop putting a check on the king. And see what happens there. Um, I suppose he's just going to move to the side now, or maybe up, so that he's like no. So he's moved to the side. He's blocked his rook, so the rook is no longer in the game per se. So that's fairly interesting. But where do we go from here? <laughs> that's the question. I'm tempted to take the pawn. I just don't want to lose tempo, really. Um, if we take, I'm going to take. He can support here, but I'm really wanting to get this pawn off as well. But I don't think that that's they're not that asleep. So we've got to check on the king, check on the queen. So they kind of have to take. And if the king doesn't move back, we well, can't move back. So we can push this pawn. Looking for yeah, but if we push, then he can come behind with his bishop, his king. So if we bring this here, supporting, then the king is going to move down. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's bring this now, supporting, maybe, but I think the king is going to drop. So that the rook is then blocking the access here. And so, interesting situation. Is there something for the knight to be doing then? Uh, knight up and then attacking the bishop while well, we can. Let's go knight here and then put. Oh, we can't go there. The oh, well, we can because if the bishop takes, we just take the bishop back, which is probably what will happen. So it's a bit congested. They've got a nice pass of themselves. Rook's coming here, obviously, to stop the um, pawn. We're looking to jump here. If they take, then we take. So we've actually got the pawn back as well, just looking at that picture. But trying to improve the position a little bit. I mean, this rook is coming here. I don't see anything else. Do you? Do I? Or does he push? Well, yeah, he can push actually because if my knight takes, then his bishop. Yeah, the rook was always coming there, so I don't understand why that took so long. Shall we now go with what we said? We're also attacking their bishop as well. This is probably why this knight is going to move and um, be taken with a check on his king. But then the king just come. Oh, okay. Take with a check on the king. King moves maybe to here to support. And then it jumps back again and then it's got a two two on one type thing 
Okay, right, so this one is going to be a bit of a menace, this pawn, because the rook is going to have to come over and defend it. So if we push, then he's going to come here with his king, then we bring our bishop here, and we're all protecting, and then this pawn starts ramping down. And then his rook can take. Okay, let's push it. So we know that picture, but in essence he probably would have to sacrifice his rook, wouldn't he? Uh, so we're going to bring the bishop here, and then this pawn is going to start pushing down because it's like going, well, all your attention is on this pawn. And do, do, do. could bring the rook up here attacking their bishop, but then he starts pushing the pawn down, doesn't he? If we move here, you can't come across there because it get taken. Move here first. My king is going to get back around. I can feel something in my water. Um, the idea of that move is to try and maybe put some pressure on the bishop here. Uh, he's supporting it. Uh, <clears throat> he's supporting it so if we come up with the rook then the bishop decides well the rook is defending now so they go back up here so then we face off their rook if their rook then takes then we take and he's got this passer and the bishop's protecting two pawns but this pawn my king is not going to be fast enough to get up there. Eee, so I might be... Whew, might have to bring the bishop back. I'm going to bring the bishop back. And maybe do some small moves with the king to maybe try and get it across here a little bit. Or is he working his way around the back somehow? I don't know, but this is obviously an issue. So conscious I've done quite a bit of talking there, but this is just the the mind, the thought process of a general chess player playing chess. What we're we're attempting to do, what we're trying to do, and everybody thinks something in chess, you know. Um, Maybe you don't want to verbalise it, but when you, as soon as you make a move, you've made that move for a particular reason. No matter what rating you are, you could be the lowest rated person in the world. You've made that move for a particular reason in your own world. So they're in a deep think. Um, maybe the bishop comes back here now, blocking the pawn from ever moving doesn't do that so I said I was going to just kind of just move the king across he does have a poor majority on this side you see as well so I'm going to move the king across so it's a bit, little bit closer to this pawn don't know if that's the right thing or not because maybe I should be acting as a pawn blocking this pawn working its way down Oh, what's the king doing now? So we could... Oh, we can't because the bishop's there, you know. Can't even push it. It's on a dark square. We could just go here, but they've done that for a reason, haven't they? Ooh, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. So do we come across here? But the thing is, there's no point in actually trying to get rid of the... Ooh, interesting though. If we do attack their rook, then the rook takes, then we get a queen. I think we might go with them apples. I think we might go with them apples, unless of course he does something drastic like... Oh, is there a sacrifice going on of some sort? No. Oh yeah, oh he could do, you know. Rook takes...
politics king takes oh that doesn't look good and the bishop supporting this pawn and his king comes over and he starts ramping oh dear me i think we're in a bit of a pickle here takes if we push and get a queen bishop takes it's not doing that okay so is this something well let me just think then let me just think if we go here it's not forced to take but if it doesn't then oh my dear it doesn't make no difference does it if he just leaves it there or if he takes then we can push and then take stake but then he's supporting his pawn all the way down with the rook oh i don't think this is um gonna work is it he's sitting waiting for us to do this rook check but then the king takes the pawn he's waiting for us to do this somehow we lose out because this damn bishop is protecting this square go up he takes We take, king takes, rook comes across attacking the bishop. Bishop comes here, ready to protect on this side. Yeah, that doesn't look good, you know, I don't think that's... Are they going to do that though? I think they're sitting waiting for me to do it. It's not as clear cut. Ideally, we want them to take, but I don't think they're going to take. After all that calculation, I think they're going to do this. And that is not as straightforward because he's got a nice little passer. Maybe it's thankful we did a few of the king moves earlier, so at least we can maybe try and get this pawn. Or block the pawn, because the bishop's just going to sit here protecting it forever and a day. And his king's going to be making its way down, supporting. So that's a bit of a headache, really. So we want them to take. But I believe this is coming. I mean, if there's nothing else is takes there's no point doing that and getting a promotion because then he does take and then we take and he's still got the rook and his rook is supporting his pawn so that's not gonna work oh dear me long four process yeah I said didn't I dear me but now it's here um, I'm just hoping with us having a rook, maybe we can slightly have the edge. So we're going to take, king takes. So we do have a passer, actually. Now we're talking about it. So we're going to attack the bishop. Like I said, I think the bishop's coming here to come here to support their pawn. I didn't factor in the fact that I've got our own passer, but I don't think that's going anywhere. There's it's going to be ours. It could push down, we go one, pushes down, we go one. So we're actually going to be on the pawn and it's on a dark square. So it's actually blocked off. It's blocked off. If we go here, then we're playing into their hands. Let's just go here for a second. King goes up. No, it doesn't. It's not going to go backwards. It's going to come down. So it's got poor majority on this side. I mean, yeah, it's coming down. Uh, oh. oh, I can't do that. Can I? So if we come here, because now his um, 
King is the one that's going to be supporting. If we came down, his King comes and supports and is attacking our pawn. So we come here, then we can push on to the Bishop with our pawn. So we can push up like that, but it is congesting our Rook. Rooks don't like confined spaces like this. So it's kind of stopping the King from coming here, but it's not stopping the King from coming here. So in essence, if we did push up, then the Bishop could take. So it doesn't look like a very good position now at all. Okay, so he's uh, going for that. So if we pushed on to the Bishop, then the King comes here because he can attack our Rook. Then we can take the Bishop off the ball because we've got support of the pawn. So I'm going to push on to the Bishop. Bishop can always just move out of the way. Wow, this has been a very interesting game and it's a long way from finished. He's really using the power of the pawns here, but it is a tempo thing. You know, pawns don't move that fast per se. We do have an elevated pawn that they have to think, oh, he's going for that. Let's take with the support of the pawn, like we said. So the king takes, so then we can come down and, um, <clears throat> oh, we can, yeah. So we go with this one because, so we go here, start taking, he's going to have distance. Let's go here. Oh, though I could have just moved my king, couldn't I? To block it off. Mind you, I don't think it would have won, would it, because, um, do, 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 do. How do we do this then? He's gonna get so in essence his king's on the other side of the board. So really I could just take this pawn off the board and our king can take his pawns off one by one, can't they? Yep. Yeah. So let's have a look at this. So we come across here, king comes down for the rook, we take that off, king takes, our king comes across here, tacking the pawn, his king makes its way down maybe to try and get ours we take this pawn off he, where is he at now let's do that slowly coming across maybe the king comes down we take king takes we move up he moves down we take he moves down we move across he moves across we Don't take. We. Hmm. We push. He comes across. Ooh, dear. That might not work, you know. He might be fast enough with his king. How is that possible? How is that possible? Okay. If we move the king first, and then if he moves his um, pawn down, then we can go here. Right, okay, let's move the king first. Because we look it looks like we lose a little bit of tempi and his king squeezes across here. But that's not right. So in any event, if it drops here, then we, we just come here. If he moves the king. If he moves the king. If he moves the king, I can't necessarily go here. Well, just uh, moves the king, we take. If he then drops the pawn, then we go here. Yeah, so he's moved the king, so then we've got, yeah, okay, so taking. Then we go here. Then we take. And I'm sure they're too far away now. Yes, they're too far away now. Uh, oh, or maybe not. Are they, you know, have I missed the tempo again? Let's go here. 
yeah, they're down by one. Oh, are they? Yes, they are. That smallest of movements with the king, that what this, that's what gave us that, doing that calculation to get to this point here. Because I didn't realise that how fast the, the pawns, well, the king could actually move. It's behind the pawn now, so this is going to get promoted. So they're probably going to resign now. So it can keep on chasing it, but I don't even have to move my king. Yeah, so if I go here, he goes there. If I go here, he goes there. I get promoted before he gets there. So I can just keep pushing the pawn. The smallest of detail. I mean, it's not over, but um, it feels a bit final. Excellent, and they've resigned. So I don't need to go through the evaluation on that. That was... Um, really looking at some my own deep evaluation of the game right from the start through to the end as i mentioned it's just my own personal thought process of um how i'm thinking in the game every chess player does their own types of calculations type things based on your own experiences uh, whether you're verbalizing it or not you you are doing some type of calculation if you're playing a game of chess even anybody who doesn't even play chess and they've got an idea and they're just playing some moves they're doing some type of calculation if buts and maybes so the key thing was the uh, crucial bit at the end really um, well I suppose it was all crucial because it helped improve our position at each individual stage even when we were a pawn down we were basically looking at the position on the board was our position slightly better in terms of we were developed our pieces were more developed than the opponent so that potentially gave us a little bit of an edge uh, in terms of being able to take advantage of the space created just because they're a, a pawn up doesn't mean that they're actually winning positionally on the board as we've always said you can have as many pieces on the board as you want but if they're not in the right places then they're tantamount to being kind of useless so really interesting calculating game um, lots of good chill factors in there just to sit back and have a look and re-read re re the position especially that rook position they didn't have to take the, um, the rook and they did fall into the lines of taking the bishop type situation and yeah we covered all of those calculations it's yeah that was a fantastic interesting game if you spot any sort of missed errors or whatever that's fine that's cool hopefully that's helped improve your game um, but it's just my own individual thought processes uh, playing this particular type of game